Hey everybody, it's Rick Uzi. It's Tech Tuesday. I'm here with Brady Vogt. We'll be back in just a minute. Hi folks, welcome to Tech Tuesday. Again, this is Rick Uzi, and I am here with Brady Volpe, and today we're going to be talking about uh, Doxis PNM and specifically our pre-equalization analyzer product and uh, intermittent modems and how that can help you find ingress. Uh, while we're talking, you can uh, chat with us on YouTube. Let us know that you're watching or if you've got any questions, uh, we'll be happy to take those. We may be able to see them as we're, we're going to be presenting something, some screens. So we may not see it while you're asking a question, but we'll certainly try to uh, go ahead and cover those at the end. We'll take a look if you've got any questions about this. So if you're joining us live, obviously, if you're not joining us live and you're watching this recorded, still go ahead and leave a question and we'll, I'll get that and we'll answer that later for you. So again, I'm here with Brady Bolt, the man, the legend, Brady Bolt. Um, <laughs> Thanks for having me, Rick. Uh, you're welcome. And I'm telling you, this, this guy, you know, I don't, I don't get out much, but, um, you know, we have, we go to trade shows and a lot of times we'll be at the same trade shows with Brady. Uh, so, you know, we'll have folks there that are, you know, chatting with Brady, they'll be talking with him or something, either in the airport or at the show or something, and then people will walk up, and it's like, you have fans out there. People will walk up, and they'll go, are you Brady Bolt? <laughs> some of them are stalkers. <laughs> yeah, he's got stalkers, but I'm sure some are nice folks that are just... There's a lot of good folks out there, absolutely. Yeah, that know well, you. We're in a great industry, though, too, yeah. so I yeah. think that's part of endemic in the cable industry. Yeah. A lot of good people, small industry, and, yeah. and we tend to all know each other. So yeah. that makes it that makes it nice. Yeah, and Brady, you know, he he speaks at a lot of trade shows. Again, industry expert on uh, cable, uh, Doxis, PNM, and then also you've got your own video podcast that you do about once a month. So yeah, the uh, Bolt so, Firm on uh, yeah on, on YouTube. So uh, definitely check that out if you yeah. have not already. Yeah. So uh, again, happy to have Brady here. And again, happy to be talking about pre-equalization analyzer and intermittent modems. So um, I'll go ahead and bring up, we're going to show you a, flu, a few uh, slides here as we go through this on, on what this is. So um, first off, for those of you that are pre-equalization analyzer users, um, you should recognize this. this is your main dashboard. And uh, there's a couple of ways that you can get to view an intermittent modem. Uh, and I'll have Brady explain in a minute what that is, maybe as we see a, an actual chart. Yeah, well, we like intermittent modems because we, we call them golden nuggets. So there's, there's a lot of value in finding them. We'll, oh, good. We're okay. going to focus on that. Okay. So uh, you can go to the dashboard here, and um, when you pull up a detail view, as you know, you'll get a map of a particular CMTS that you might select. And what we're showing here is the map, and we see a, a little circle around one of, the, one of the green pins. And something that some of you may not have seen or noticed before, because this is fairly new for us, but you've got a exclamation point on top of that pin, which shows them that it's an intermittent modem, right? Yeah, and and let's, I guess let's even first take a step back and talk about why we're focusing on intermittent modems. Okay. A lot of cable operators have problems with return path noise ingress, and, mm -hmm. and I'm saying a lot of cable operators kind of jokingly, right, because pretty much all cable op operators have a problem fighting return path noise ingress, and what the intermittent modem report does or what this intermittent modem detection does is allow us to identify modems, cable modems in subscribers homes um, that are leaking return path noise into the plant. It's, mm -hmm. And it's not so much the modem that's leaking the noise, but it's the in-home wiring that's leaking return path noise mm -hmm. such that uh, you know maybe there's a loose connector on the back of the modem or maybe there's some shielding, compromised shielding within a subscriber's house or maybe even the drop itself to the subscriber's house, which has been damaged. And that's allowing ingress noise, you know, uh, whether it's impulse noise or just shortwave radio noise or any type of garbage junk that's going back into the return. And so this, uh, what Rick is showing here on the screen, this modem with an exclamation point on it, even though it's a green modem, which you know normally we assume to be a healthy modem, um, that particular modem, what we're saying by this, kind of what we're going to walk through here in this presentation, is a modem that we have an extraordinarily high confidence factor is allowing noise into the return plant. So that's, that's mm -hmm. basically the overall premise behind uh, intermittent modems. So uh, we'll show this, and then I've got a question for you. So here's, here's an example. When somebody clicks on this, it's going to open up um, this particular chart. Now, this is interesting because it's almost like a Rorschach test, I think, here. So I see a duck when I'm looking at this. Maybe 
the, but what does that tell what, you about me? Well, I don't know. What did you What did you eat the before this presentation? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. So, so, so. anyway, that I, that's what I see in this. But there's there's obviously something here that this is telling us about this modem. Right. Uh, so there's there's um, there's three different colored lines on here. There's a red line at the top. There's a green two green lines in the middle, and then there's that yellow line on the bottom. Mm -hmm. The red line at the top is the transmit power of the cable modem over time. And in, you know, in this example here, the beginning of the time on the, on the x-axis started on October 11th, 2019, mm -hmm. and it went all the way to October 18th, 2019. So about a seven day period of time, we've been monitoring the transmit power of the cable modem. Mm -hmm. And you can see on, on, on the beginning there, the transmit power was about 50 dBmV, and then it dropped down to about 40 dBmV, so that's a 10 dB variance in the cable modem transmit power. Which it should not be doing. No, no. Yeah. And, you know, in the ideal world, the cable modem, if everything is stable in the plant and in the subscriber's home, that cable modem may only adjust its transmit power by, you know, maybe at most a, a dB or two due to daily temperature changes. And, mm -hmm. you know, that, that daily temperature changes are, you know, 20 degrees maybe in the, in the course of a day. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing a 10 dB variation here rather than that plus or minus 1 dB that I would suggest mm -hmm. would happen in a normal cable plant. So, so why is the cable modem adjusting its transmit power by 10 dB? Mm -hmm. Again, we go back, there's, maybe there's a loose connector on the back of the cable modem. Maybe there's um, a loose connector at the wall jack where the cable modem connects to. Or maybe there's a, a damaged cable between the cable modem and the wall jack and every time the dog runs over that cable, they are, you know, they're basically moving the cable around, and that's causing the cable modem to increase or decrease its power. Because when you have a, you know, when you have that loose connector scenario, that uh, damaged shielding scenario, what happens is that when you lose the shielding connection, uh, the CMTS will have less receive power at the input of its input connector from the cable modem. So the CMTS will tell the cable modem, hey, I, I have less input power because the connector on the back of the cable modem loosened up, tells the cable modem you have to jack up your transmit power, so the CMTS has the same receive input power. Similarly, when the connector, you know, the dog runs back over the cable and the connector tightens up just a, just a hair, now the cable modem will have more transmit power, or the CMTS will have more transmit power mm -hmm. at its input, and it'll tell the cable modem to reduce its transmit power. So that's what the red line is doing, mm -hmm. and we see that, you know, it, it's kind of adjusting itself sort of unnaturally over time. Mm -hmm. The yellow line in the bottom is the, we're, we're looking basically at the pre-equalizer um, of the cable modem itself, and it's essentially, we, we call it this MTR, it's essentially looking at, uh, you can kind of assume this is a signal to noise ratio input mm -hmm. at the cable modem itself. So we can make an estimate of how much RF noise is at the input of the cable modem. So when we correlate these two together, we can see the red, the, the transmit power goes down um, from 50 to 40 mm -hmm. dBmV, and the yellow line goes up, and that, that tells us that the SNR actually gets better. So we can think of this as that, that connector gets tightened on the back of the cable modem, we need less transmit power, and the signal-to-noise ratio gets better. That gives us a positive correlation that we, we believe this cable modem has less noise when the connection gets tighter, mm -hmm. and then we get that green line. The green line is just telling us we got a positive correlation that we think the connection's getting better and the noise is getting better. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's how we're kind of making that indication there. So MTR, is that its main tap ratio? Is that right? Is that well, it's, it's actually a, a cable labs um, made up. Um, uh, it's not an acronym. It's a, uh, as Ron, Ron Rannick would say, it's a, uh, uh, not a cinnamon, <laughs> cinnamon <laughs> a, a cinnamon initialism. Okay. Um, and, and it's, it really, really correlates to all of the energy in every tap but the main tap. So, so what happens is once you get a bunch of noise coming into the mm -hmm. input of the cable modem, these main, these non-main taps, right. everything but the non-main taps start to jump around a bit. So as you're, as you're, so you got your main tap eight, right? Yes. So as you've got your other taps, the ratio, I guess, changes where you've got a lot more energy going through those other taps. So Correct. that's basically showing you that the modem is having to compensate more for uh, an impairment. For right. impairment and also for noise that's it's in, in the input of that right. cable modem. Yeah. So um, this is um, this test is based on a cable labs um, 
best practices. Mm -hmm. um, so it is, it's something that we've built on top of that and, and built into the Nimbledis PNM application, mm -hmm. which, um, of course, you guys, as our good partners, also mm -hmm. um, provide to your, your customers as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, and then here we have, oh, and I, so I, I took various screenshots of what's going on so that, you know, this can be helpful to you as you're looking at this. So when you go ahead and click on this and you open that uh, intermittent modem chart, it opens in a, in a different window. So when you close that window, it's going to also have brought up for that particular modem the, the details on the, that modem, which, again, should look familiar to you. So you can see the information on the modem, and then if you were to scroll down, you'll see the uh, ICFR and the, the digital taps right there. So in this case, again, what we're seeing is a green modem. Everything on the, the left side, as far as in-channel frequency response, looks green, right? It's, yeah, so, uh, so during this poll, and when we look at the, the instant time, the time of when this modem was polled, it looks fantastic. Mm -hmm. and, and that's something that you miss if it weren't for the fact that we right. had the exclamation point by this modem. Yeah. Now, if you look at the history of this modem, you may see that during different polling intervals, this modem could have turned red, could have turned yellow mm -hmm. because again it's an intermittent modem. Right. So at different times in history, we may have seen that you know when that connector was loose, this modem may have been red, and so that's that's part of the intermittency of this modem. Um, we've also seen with some of these now that in in um, future iterations, we've been looking at the downstream also, mm -hmm. and we see that the downstream levels for these intermittent modems also jump around pretty substantially as well. And you'll see that in upcoming releases of our software, mm -hmm. that we can correlate the upstream and downstream jumping around at the same time on intermittent modems. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then uh, again, you can see here's another pin. In this case, it's yellow. And we pull that up, and that is a shark to me. Yeah. I'm, not sure if that's, I'm not sure if that's baby shark or mama shark. Yeah, you know, actually, it also looks like the top of the United States as well, maybe a little right. bit. Yeah. I, could, I could see that. Okay. Um, what did you have for lunch? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So in this case, again, we're seeing, uh, we're seeing, now this is interesting. So I have a question for you here. So we see the green line, which is telling us that, hey, you've definitely got a correlation right, right. in this spot. But I'm also seeing, to me, what looks like, you know, on the left side, it looks like things are kind of moving in opposite directions in a similar way. So is it that uh, the green line is just hitting a certain threshold and it's then identifying a correlation? So we need at least three data points of to, to form a correlation. Mm -hmm. So obviously on the left-hand side, I can see there's, it looks like that's a good correlation with between the, the, the red line, which again is the cable modem transmit power, and the yellow line, which is identifying noise at the input of the cable modem. Mm -hmm. But I don't, you know, our algorithm didn't get enough data points looking back mm -hmm. far enough to the left in history. So we weren't comfortable drawing that green line there, that mm -hmm. correlation line. Um, and the same on the on the far right hand side where mm -hmm. it looks like it's starting to correlate together, but our algorithm just didn't have enough history there mm -hmm. or future history to draw the green correlation line. We just had enough history in the middle mm -hmm. to draw that green correlation line. And so we only we only show modems um, with the exclamation point, and later I know you'll show the intermittent modem uh, report. But we only we only tag modems with that green line and and produce those in the on the map with the exclamation point and in an intermittent modem report if we're able to draw a clear correlation. Mm -hmm. So it's the worst cases. Yeah, it's yeah. and that and that way we're not falsely reporting modems yeah. that you know maybe. They just had one data point. You know, mm -hmm. Maybe there was a maintenance window. You just had that one data point, yeah. and it shows up. We need we need more data yeah. points. In this case, it has to be at least three data points. Yeah, and nice. I mean, it's nice though that you can see it visually because you can look and you go, well, even though it's not green all the way across, you can see that it's correlated in some sense just visually, right? Correct. Yeah, yeah. and the human eye can always make those final yeah. final uh, decisions of well, yeah, the the algorithm said it correlated, but boy, when I look at this with my eye, I sure can see even more correlation mm -hmm. that this is definitely an intermittent modem and likely leaking noise into my return path. So Now, you said something earlier, which I think I, I didn't understand until you said it. So the intermittent part of it, I was, th I was thinking that was intermittent from the perspective of maybe the noise is intermittent, like impulse noise or something like that. But it's, it's not that. It's that the... Uh, the conditions on the plant or in the on the uh, connector or whatever it is are changing. No, we, yeah, we're we're trying to isolate modems that are in subscribers' homes that are absolutely uh, letting return path noise into the into the plant. So you so know, it's not it's not issues in the outside plant. Okay. These are these are issues in subscribers' homes where it's either the drop cable 
or cabling and wiring in the inside home that's allowing ingress noise into the return path. And remember, 80 to 90 percent of ingress noise is coming from subscribers' homes. Mm -hmm. You're not going to fix this by going out and, and doing outside plant work, right. like you know, tightening connectors or replacing connectors. That, that's only 10 to 20 percent of your return path noise. Mm -hmm. The majority of your noise, you're going to have to visit individual subscribers' homes, look at their drops, look at the cabling on the outside, fix bad connectors, fix bad drops, and then, if necessary, enter the subscriber's home and fix bad connectors, fix mm -hmm. bad drops, tighten loose connectors. Right. So uh, does it actually, if, if the amount of noise in the home goes up, if somebody turns on a vacuum cleaner or something that might introduce noise in the plant, does that actually impact this? Or is it just that the connector is open and it doesn't matter whether the noise is coming in? It could impact this slightly, but mm -hmm. it, it really depends on when you pull the modem or not. And a lot of things that inject ingress into from subscribers' homes um, could be things like vacuum cleaners, hair dryers, and things like that, which could be very short-term use. Other things could be sodium lights, LED lighting. Mm -hmm. um, in states that have legalized marijuana, they you know there's a lot of grow lights that, stuff. <laughs> that absolutely yeah. those those emit huge amounts of noise. Even little uh, they call them uh, wall warts, all those little power supplies that power all the electronics mm -hmm. in your home generate a tremendous amount of. Uh, electromagnetic magnetic radiation, mm -hmm. and the closer those are to the coax wiring in subscribers' homes, the more noise that's okay. going to get into the return path. Okay, so if that connector is loose, it's actually seeing that, it's, this is actually telling you that it is seeing some noise from somewhere. It's it's telling you that noise is, from that subscriber's home is getting into this getting particular into. cable modem, and you can see the MAC address at the top of the report, mm -hmm. so you know exactly what subscriber's home to go to, and you've got some cleanup to do. So that and noise is making the cable modem want to transmit more loudly? Or, right? Well, the, right? the cable modem wants to tra transmit more loudly when the connector is loose, okay. but because the connector is loose, um, when you get that green correlation line, you, that's telling you that in addition to the connector being loose and causing the cable modem to transmit more loudly, we're also getting ingress noise. All right, in. So, the so yellow, that, there's two parts got to that. It. So the yellow line is showing you that the actual noise Correct. you're getting there. Because we do Pretty get enough. modems that have a loose connector and transmit higher and lower, which is the red line. Mm -hmm. But you don't always get that correlation. That right. you know, maybe maybe the scenario is that as such that you do not have as much ingress noise coming from a home with a loose connector as a as a different home that has a lot of that's growing pot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay, okay. yeah they have, gotcha. they've got a lot of grow lights going yeah, on. Yeah, so okay. we're we're focused on those homes that are generating noise. Okay. And again, you know, when you close that uh, that particular tab or not tab, but uh, window that opened up, then you get the details. And again, this one um, is a little closer to the yellow here. So this one is is, and you're, you, I think you're seeing a higher tap nine there. Correct. Tap nine and tap ten normally yeah. tell you you have um, in-home sources of impairments, mm -hmm. and we can see tap nine on this one is, is sticking up a little higher mm -hmm. than we'd like it to. Mm -hmm. um, and also to the left of that, the in-channel frequency response has a bit of a hump on it. Mm -hmm. um, this is clearly an in-home issue, mm -hmm. um, and we also saw that with the intermittent modem uh, issue there. So this would be a clear case mm -hmm. where you know we have both the correlation between the intermittent modem and also tap nine elevate a little bit. So yeah, clear case, we want to go fix some issues with the in-home. All those taps to the far right, which are outside plant, Those would be your outside really plant. Low. They're buried in the noise yeah, floors, really and no problems there. Yeah, okay. And then, of course, uh, you know, we've got red modems. We've got a red modem on the map with the exclamation point. When we yep. open that, uh, I got nothing on this one. It's so, so the, you know, I think this is another <laughs> yeah. good example here, because this particular modem, you can see at the top, is transmitting four upstreams at the same time, 21.7, 24.9, 34.5, and 37.7 megahertz. So even though it has four upstreams, it looks like there's only one red line there. But that mm -hmm. that's actually that red line is showing four upstreams overlaid with each other. It is exactly the same transmit power. Mm -hmm. So those four upstreams are increasing and decreasing their transmit power exactly the same time. The lower line is the uh, the MTR for each of those upstreams. So the MTR, or the, basically the SNR for, for that cable modem pre-equalizer, varies a little differently. And, and that is because um, when that connector is loose, different frequencies will is, allow RF noise to get in at, um, at different frequencies than... Uh, so a, a loose connector basically has mm -hmm. a, a gap. 
Right. And different RF frequencies will be allowed to get into that gap differently than other RF mm -hmm. frequencies, depending on basically the, the gap of that. So, mm -hmm. so what you're seeing here is that some frequencies are, are allow more RF noise in than others. It's, okay. There's frequency dependencies there. And, and that's something that anyone who's done any type of leakage work or field work will, will know that um, lower frequencies allow less noise and higher frequencies allow more noise. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing that exactly here. Uh, the top line is likely the 37.7 megahertz, which is allowing more RF noise in or displaying the effects of more RF noise getting into the return path than the lower line, which is 21.7 megahertz. Mm -hmm. But we're still seeing all of the lines somewhat correlated Correct. as they're going down. Yeah, right? they're, all, they're all going to allow some amount of noise. Yeah, okay. Um, and then as we look at that, so here we're seeing, again, if you look at this modem and the different frequencies, one looks really good. And, right. And the others... So this goes back to what I was saying about yeah. the frequency dependencies before, mm -hmm. and we see this a lot when we use proactive network maintenance, PNM, mm -hmm. where some frequencies are much more dramatically impacted than others. In this case, the 37.7 um, megahertz upstream is the most severely impacted on this and the 34.5 so normally the higher in frequency you go those frequencies are going to be more impacted than the lower frequencies due to an intermittent type connection mm -hmm. that kind of like um, you know somebody can break a, a glass if they sing a certain pitch because yeah. of the resonance <laughs> of the glass you, that's a really good analogy yeah. I, I'm gonna have to use, use that, that one that's, can, that, that's awesome I, will, I, I will never thought you. of that one yeah that, that's very good because okay. it, it, it all comes down to resonant frequencies echo cavities air gaps things like that but people use different analogies for uh, the glass is really nice mm -hmm. so depending on what that gap is in in the connector that is loose in the house or maybe um, a, the squirrel chew on the drop going into the house those will let different frequencies in different noise frequencies in and will impact um, these upstreams differently so you know a lot of times we think well you want to stay away from that low frequency 21.7 megahertz because it's that's where all the noise is in return that, mm -hmm. that's a very correct assumption most of the time mm -hmm. but as we can see here there's there's some loose connector or some damaged shielding in the subscribers home and that's actually impacting the higher frequencies worse than it's impacting the lower frequencies hmm. interesting and then again we see uh, the charts yeah. here and we've got, we've got the same kind of thing we can see one looks Pretty good, and the others not so much. So, yeah. so you know, basically a, a loose connector or a, a damaged piece of coax it's that squirrel chew on the coax, um, or the, the coax that the dog has been chewing on, um, it's not impacting the lower frequency nearly as much as it's impacting the higher frequencies. And, and we can clearly see that the, the lower frequency is pretty flat, the mm -hmm. higher frequencies get much worse. So we can see the frequency dependent. Um, dependencies that are that are happening here um, where higher frequencies get mm -hmm. impacted worse mm -hmm. and that's something to be cognizant about when you see this 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 makes it easier to to determine that this is likely you know, if you see this even without the intermittent this makes it more uh, easy to determine that this is likely an in-home problem likely due to loose connectors bad connectors or damaged coax because of the fact that it's some look worse than others? Is that yeah, but it will be the, the fact that higher frequencies are impacted than oh, lower frequencies. frequencies. Got it. Okay. All right. And uh, I wanted to show you also that there's another way that you can get to the, see these intermittent, modem, intermittent modems in one group place, and that's if you go into reports, you'll see the intermittent modem report. If you click on that, that will pull up a report. Um, and I'm not sure. Do you know how this is the default sorting of this? I meant to ask you that. Um, I actually don't recall the <laughs> on, on this. Anyway, uh, it will show you this screen. But one one thing I wanted to point out is at mm -hmm. the very bottom it shows um, a one out of ten, one to ten out of three hundred and three entries. Mm -hmm. I, I don't remember how many total modems were on this system. Do you recall? Is it roughly three thousand? Something like that. Yeah. I, I would guess it's yeah. three thousand because on any given system we found typically about one percent of the modems fall into the intermittent modem report. We've seen so many different systems now where it's almost always about 1% mm -hmm. of the modems. On really bad systems where it may be older plants where the homes are much older, it could mm -hmm. be 2%. Mm -hmm. And that's just the age of the wirings in, in, okay. in, the, in the home. Yeah. But um, it's actually a small percent. So if you think about it where you're looking at 1% of the, of the homes in your plant, um, you can target those homes, but you can also, and I think Rick will probably show us shortly, how we, you can even not necessarily reduce that 1%, but figure out what's the worst of that 1% of homes mm -hmm. that are allowing that 80 to 90% of return path noise into your plant. 
So this is really, really powerful yeah. report you pulled up, Rick. And, and this is really important for two reasons. One, as this noise gets in the plant, that's all going to funnel right back to the CMTS, right? So it's going to impact that whole upstream. And that, that's an excellent point because, uh, I mean, I know a lot of people know that, but as we get more and more new people into the field, we, we got to really reinforce that, that one home, if it, it's emitting a huge amount of noise into the return, that, that can impact every subscriber on mm -hmm. that return. Because remember, all the returns funnel back up to mm -hmm. the CMTS. Mm -hmm. So it can just take one yeah. bad subscriber, not, not that the subscriber's bad, but <laughs> they're just letting a lot of noise into the return. Mm -hmm. So just one con subscriber can take your, your return path SNR or MER, and remember SNR and MER are the same in the return. Mm -hmm. But take your SNR or MER and return from 36, 37, down to 20. It's so, and, and we've seen that many times mm -hmm. before. Or typically, it's more than one subscriber. It depends on how many subs you have on a node, but it doesn't take a lot in order to drive them all mm -hmm. down. Now, what about egress? Does that matter as much in the home? Because I know you, if you've got noise leaking in, then you can have noise leaking, or you can have signal leaking out, and that would be a problem, obviously, for the FCC. They've got to keep on top of that. Does it matter so much in the home? Well. Every point of egress is a, is a point where we're allowing more energy out. And when it comes to the FCC, it really depends on where that leaky home is mm -hmm. and how much ingress is coming out. If you're right by a cell tower yeah. or you're right beside maybe, maybe a radio station or a, a, mm -hmm. a building that mm -hmm. may care about it, uh, you know, maybe if you're in Maryland and your house is really close to the NSA, yeah. uh, that yeah. could be a real problem for yeah. you. If yeah. you're out in the country someplace, and it's like yeah. a, if a tree falls in the woods, is anyone and no one's around? Did, <laughs> did anyone hear it? Is there egress? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Okay. All right. So uh, on this report, again, this is just as, you, as I pull it up here. So uh, you know you, what you do is you click on that one of those charts on the right, for whichever mode you want to look at, and it's going to pull up again similar kinds of things. So we're seeing something very core again up and down here. Visually, you can see it, yeah. and then we yeah we don't want to see this. We don't want to yeah. see this at all in the network because yeah. this is the typical case of a bad modem that's or bad bad cabling that's allowing noise into the yeah. return. And I just clicked on a few different examples. Here's another one where it's it's interesting because you know it looks flat a lot of the time, but then there's this one big change. So yeah. what's, what's what's accounting for that? And I, I mean these sometimes you you really have to know is is this because the um, the the subscriber may have been just jiggling the modem around and mm -hmm. happened just once. Um, that's why there's a forward and back arrow on this, because you can look back in history a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, but this could be totally legit. This mm -hmm. could be just a loose connector and, mm -hmm. you know, the wind blew or someone just stepped on the cable and that caused it to go. Because you can also see then further out to the right, it stepped up Start, another yeah. 5 dB. And I, I'll tell you, that looks like it's right at 54 dBmV. It's probably max transmit power for that modem. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's very possible on that. Hmm. Uh, Something, again, here, just interesting. I don't know if there's anything specific about this, but we see, again, a big correlation in two spots. Yeah, and, it, and it's a pretty big jump. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, not, not only those two, two spots, but you see other subtleties in, mm -hmm. in other areas. But with that, with that big jump from, it looks like, about 34, 32, up to 44 or so deep. So mm -hmm. it's, I mean, more than a 10 dB jump, but you see a really huge decrease in the SNR of the modem mm -hmm. from about 27 down to about 17 or 18 dB mm -hmm. yeah. on the modem. Mm -hmm. So pretty substantial decrease in, uh, in the SNR, which means that's a pretty substantial amount of noise that's going to be allowed into the plant for mm -hmm. this modem. So again, I was just clicking on the charts to the right, and you can see all of these yeah. showing issues that, that can be addressed now. Um, and this was this was an interesting one. Yeah, so this modem here, I mean, if you see something like this, there's only two data points that came up on this modem. This may be a modem that is was just intermittently came online and then went offline, mm -hmm. or maybe it was placed on service, in service um, on, on the day, and we only got two data points yeah. on it. So it's difficult to know without yeah. knowing more about this subscriber. So this would just be one to watch for later. Yep. Yeah. And then uh, something I showed here is that we can click on standard deviation and sort by that. And yeah, that's so, where we're going from, you can see there are different numbers here in that column, and then when I, after I sort, we've got the highest. Uh, now, what is, that, what is that figure that we're actually looking at there? Yeah, so, I mean, the standard deviation is really just telling you how severe is this modem changing its transmit power over time. So that the mm -hmm. column just to the left of that standard deviation is the average cable modem transmit power. Mm -hmm. The standard deviation is then we're taking that transmit power over that seven-day interval and saying, you know, 
Is this modem changing its transmit power just a little bit, or is it changing it a lot? So we, when you see a standard deviation of 18, we're saying over seven days, that cable modem's tra changing its transmit power an awful lot. Mm -hmm. And if you do the reverse sort, you may see standard deviations of like 0.1 or 1, and that's just saying over time that cable modem's only changing its transmit power by just a little bit. Mm -hmm. So what you've done here is you said, show me the cable modems that are changing their, their transmit power by a lot. Mm -hmm. and, and this is where I said earlier that you know we have this 1% of modems, now, if, if we change our, if we sort by standard deviation to see the worst standard deviation, we're going to see the worst of the worst modems mm -hmm. whenever we look at that very top modem. And, mm -hmm. and this lets us say, okay, you know, I've got 320, 303 modems here that are showing up on this report. W which one should I go look at yeah. first? So you can look at the worst stand standard mm -hmm. deviation first, yeah. and we're going to see some pretty bad modems here. So yeah, I think, uh, I don't know if I took them in order, but I just clicked a few of the charts uh, yep. to the right there. So we're, here we're seeing... So, so this is kind of a great yeah. case here. Yeah. What, what this is showing us is this modem, it actually wasn't changing a lot at right. first. It was changing a little bit, and we did have a correlation there in the center, mm -hmm. but uh, something happened and the modem went offline. Mm -hmm. So this that's, is kind of like the, the proactive nightmare here where we had an opportunity <laughs> to fix this modem, right. uh, but eventually that connection broke loose, yeah. uh, probably damaged cable or something, or, and now the modem's no longer online. Mm -hmm. So this is not what we want to see. Yeah. I see some other examples. Yeah. This one was on and off again. And these are mm -hmm. these are great examples here where you can see, you know, cases this is going to be probably damaged cable outside where, you know, uh, something happened here, maybe it rained and rain got into that and now mm -hmm. the modem's offline. Technicians a lot of times struggle with these type of cases. This is where a subscriber will call into the CSR and say, "Hey, my modem's offline." By the time the technician gets there, that water dried out or the you know, something happened to cause a corrosion to break away in the micro-reflection. Mm -hmm. Of course, you've, I'm sure you've covered micro-reflections yeah. before. Yeah. And so the modem will be offline for a short period of time. Something happens, the micro-reflection's broken up, the corrosion's gone away, the water's dried out, uh, the connector tightened up just enough in order for this to come back online. And these are problems that we see all the time with intermittent modems. Mm -hmm. What we, you know, of course, what we always recommend when you're troubleshooting in the home are pressure test kits, because mm -hmm. that'll get to the root cause of this extraordinarily fast. Mm -hmm. But so this this modem is both going to be allowing return path ingress into the plant, and it's going to be driving the subscriber nuts because mm -hmm. their modem's going off and on. And the repair technician. As well. And the and repair technician. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Here's one that got better for yeah. a while. And <laughs> yeah. Now another thing but, you want to make sure is when you're looking at these. Did this modem drop all the way down just because of a maintenance window? So mm -hmm. you know, please be sure that right. you're <laughs> you're making sure that this didn't happen uh, because of a maintenance window. Now that other modem that dropped off a couple times is likely just going offline. This modem could have gone down, could have gone offline when it went all the way to zero, uh, or it could have been a maintenance window that caused it mm -hmm. to go to zero. We we don't always know, but you know, make sure that this uh, isn't a maintenance window issue. Certainly is an intermittent modem. Mm -hmm. Certainly could have gone offline because of that. Uh, or also keep in mind subscribers do turn their modems off sometimes. True. Um, so, hold on one second. Let me bring us back on here because that's we're done there. So one other thing I want to mention about uh, in-home issues or near-home issues is you know we've talked about correlation groups in the past, and it's really mm -hmm. nice to be able to you know in pre-equalization analyzer you can pull up you can click the signature button or tab, you can see that on the dashboard as well, and you can pull up a correlation group which is going to be showing you modems that are being impacted by the same impairment. So there you could maybe tackle one problem, one impairment, and fix five, six, ten, or however many modems, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, but if they have a lot of these in-home, near-home problems, it's a lot harder to, for the software to, to correlate, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, and that's, and that's, that's one of the things we've always recommended, that while well, fixing correlation groups is it makes great optics because you can fix a whole bunch of modems at once. Mm -hmm. uh, you get a lot more bang for the buck focusing on individual modems. And as you start to clean up individual modems, whether it's the intermittent modems or red modems, it does make your correlation groups a lot more clear because you start to you start to get rid of the uh, impairments that kind of clog up correlation groups that are that are due to in-home modems. Mm -hmm. So if, I hope that is kind of makes sense. Yeah, if not, no. you can grill me with some more questions on no, it. Yeah, I get it, because I know we've looked at it before, and you know, as you're looking at those correlation groups, it's kind of hard to tell, because you can see when you look at the digital taps, for example, that you've got 
maybe a combination of in-home, near-home, as well as right. some elevated taps that are showing it's further out in the plant. And a lot of times the in-home impairments will dominate the overall response of a cable modem, the in-channel frequency response of the cable modem. Mm -hmm. And when we create correlation groups, we use that in-channel frequency response to create the correlation group. Mm -hmm. So if you have a, a tap 9 and 10, which is the in-home impairment, dominating the in-channel frequency response, that modem is rarely going to fit, fall into the correlation group of the modems around it. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times you'll see, we'll be looking at a correlation group and you'll see modems that aren't part of the correlation group that really look like they should be, mm -hmm. and it's likely because they have in-home impairments, mm -hmm. which will not allow them to fall into the correlation group right. because their in-channel frequency response is so mucked up yeah. due to the in-home impairment. Yeah. So this is great, Brady. It's, it's a fantastic tool for folks to be able to go find those problems that, like you said, are you know, eight or nine out of ten of the issues that they're going to have in the cable plant are going to be in-home in home and near-home. And this gives you a way to target those, and really specifically to target those modems that are letting noise in the plant, which again can be a problem uh, not just for that subscriber, but for everybody else, depending on how noisy they are. So this has been very educational. I don't think we had one question that somebody took, retracted, so. Um, yeah, Gary, I don't know why you retracted yeah, the message. Yeah, I'm but... sure it was a great question. We didn't get a chance to see it, yeah. but if, again, if you, have, uh, if you have a question, if you're watching this recorded, not live, uh, just go ahead and drop us a, a message on the video, and uh, I'll get that answered for you. I may have to call Brady if it's really technical. <laughs> Uh, but we'll get that answered for you. So thanks for your time today. This has been great. Hey, it was uh, a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Be sure to hit their subscribe button on the YouTube you. channel. Yeah. Hit the notification bell. And uh, also follow me on Volt Firm on YouTube. Volt we've Firm. Got some, uh, we've got some good videos too. Yeah, Brady's got some great uh, videos there on various technical things, especially related to Doxis. And we've got mm -hmm. some great knowledgeable guests on there. So uh, next week, I will be back next Tuesday at 3 o'clock. Uh, Eastern Time. I'll be here with Peter Olivia next week, and we're going to be talking about True Vision because we are doing a update, a feature update, tomorrow morning. So we sent an email to all of our True Vision users. You may be, in addition to being a pre-equalization analyzer customer, you may be a True Vision customer as well. And um, Peter and I are also going to be talking next week about the update. We're going to demonstrate some of the new features in there, so that'll be good for you to check out. If you're not a customer of either of these products and are interested in them, go to our website, zcorum.com and uh, just see what we have to offer. If you're in the cable industry, we've got some great tools, including Pre-Equalization Analyzer, which again, uh, Brady is the you know, kind of the development uh, genius behind that at Nimble This. So. Sign up, we need to eat, guys. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so thanks for joining us, and we'll be back next time, next Tuesday. I'll be back with you for Tech Tuesday. See you then. See y'all.